delivery here for one Miss Partridge, courtesy of Howdy's dependable door-to-door-to-door -to -door -to -door delivery service. Oh, oh my goodness, Howdy, you frightened me. Terribly sorry, ma'am. Suppose I should have known. Oh, no, no, that would have frightened me too. Uh, oh, is that my order? Yeah, yeah. It sure is, Poppy. Hot off the shelves, just the way you like them. Boy, looks like you already got a horde that make a dragon jealous. What you need even more yarn for? Not that I'll turn down a sale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm just working on some scarves and sweater dresses. I want everyone in the neighborhood to have something warm to wear when you know, winter's comes along. It seems like these changing seasons keep sneaking up on me. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Not enough daylight to get everything done. Of course, it helps to have an extra pair of hands. <laughs> Seems like you know that already, though. I can see you've recruited an extra pair of your own today. Oh, <laughs> yes. Thank you again for your help, dear. And thank goodness for it. I was worried I was going to get all tangled up with all these colors of yarn. Hmm, I can see why. It's a real risk. It is? Well, sure. But lucky for you, I think I might have something to help. Behold! <laughs> no, no, nothing to fear here. What you're looking at is a bona fide yarn spinner. Perfect for keeping all your extras neatly spooled up. Safe, effective, and... No pesky batteries or electricity to fret over. Oh. Oh. Well, <laughs> that... Does sound helpful, doesn't it? Oh, it does. Here, yeah, tell you what. Today only, as an extra special deal for an extra special customer, you can give her a whirl. No strings attached. Well, no strings but oh. the arm, that is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I've already overstayed my welcome. Uh, got a full shipment back at the shop I've got a time for. Oh, well, I'll check in on you and your new wonder device oh, next time I bring you an order, Poppy. Oh, Till then. Oh, I don't know how to work these things. But what if he was so insistent that he didn't need help? Do you think he could help me pick up a <laughs> Please, does Poppy see Punch who asked me to make this cake for you? Really, I... I... Well, it's, it's such an honor. Oh, I'm sure it is, darling. Now. Let's get down to brass tacks. Oh, uh, well, I don't think I have any of those. I don't like to keep anything too sharp around here, you know. Details, Poppy dear. Details. Ah, oh, of course, of course. <laughs> now, now then, uh, what do you think you'd like? Uh, what would I like? Poppy dear, this is going to be on stage. It's hardly a like. It's a need. And it needs to be big! Bold! Oh. B big. <laughs> big, yes. Uh, maybe three tiers, then? Only three? <laughs> oh, dream bigger, Poppy! Oh. Um, well, yes. Yes. I suppose it is a big neighborhood. Better to play it safe. <laughs> yes, you know, I, I do love to play it safe. Uh -huh, but not too safe. After all, this needs to be a showstopper. It needs to have beauty, pizzazz, yes, danger. Danger? Oh, oh, my feathers. I don't know how I feel about making a dangerous cake. Ah, uh -uh, but, 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 my feathered friend, you'll do great. I'm certain of it. There's no one else in the neighborhood I would trust with this. <laughs> and not just because you're the only one here who can make something that doesn't come out of a gelatin mold. Oh. oh. <laughs> Oh, well, goodness me, you're going to make me blush. <laughs> oh, so, I take it you have everything you need? Oh, uh, uh, well, well, not quite. See, what I, when I asked what you'd like, I thought maybe you would have a flavor in mind. A what? Well, a flavor. <laughs> you know, uh, we could do chocolate or vanilla or sprinkles, buttercream, butterbell, butterscotch. Oh, uh, uh, <clears throat> hmm. uh, to be honest with you, I didn't think that far. You, you didn't, you didn't think about the flavor. Well, 
Well, the audience can't taste it from their seats, now can they? Oh, what do you think? <laughs> hmm. Do I want potatoes again? Or do I want chips? Well, when the chips are down, they're both sort of the same. <sighs> to an ordinary person, maybe. But chips are a bit heavier for a performer. I don't want to get a stitch while I'm rehearsing my dance moves. And it slows my creative thinking. No, 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 I've decided. Boiled potatoes, it must be a game. Well, shucks, Sally. If you're looking for a healthy change for a gal on the go, look no further than this sensational new instant mash. Instant? Or faster, guaranteed. All you do is add water and whoosh, a fluffy mashed tater masterpiece. Dinner for one, three, twenty, cast a thousands. Whatever you want, they're lighter than air, too. Won't weigh you down, or your wallet. I give it my five-star rating, and those are the golden kind. Oh, my! That does sound convenient, especially with my hectic schedule. Let's see. Bubble Blast Soap Flakes. Oh, what a strange name! Ha! <laughs> yeah, it's a marketing thing. Makes them sound squeaky clean for your diet, eh? Why, yes, I suppose it does. All right, then. I'll take one of those boxes of Bubble Blast Instant Mash, mm -hmm. a bag of Old McDonald's porridge oats, oats, one loaf of bouncy yellow bread, Sponge. and a box of that nice new sunshine cereal you introduced me to last week. More chips and sauce. Good choices are the only choices you can make at this store, but you've got a knack nonetheless, Miss Starlet. Oh, and a pint of milk. Thank you. There you go. Service with a smile. Oh, I didn't see you there. What can I get you for you today, Walsh? Blue don't actually have any blue pigmentation. They have to grow in soil that is basic as well, so the pine straw should be left for the other beds. You're telling me that these flowers are liars, <sighs> Frankie? I'm not telling you that these flowers are liars, Barnaby. I'm talking about how these flowers are specially selected to look this way. Hey, being blue isn't anything special, pal. Don't you know that blue is all the rage nowadays? I don't think people are painting themselves blue, frankly. Are you saying your fur color isn't natural? I beg your pardon? I'm a natural beauty as far as you know. <laughs> I doubt you're any sort of beagle. I've never seen any blue dog before in my life. Now, if you don't mind, we'd like to continue tending to my flowers in peace. You're going to have to do more than tend to them if you want them to grow up nice and big. You know what they say, you got to entertain your plants to make them happy. That's true, but I'm not going to let your snappy patter poison my petunias. I'd hardly call your material entertaining, much less fertilizer. Oh, don't you worry, Frank. The last thing I'll do is overwhelm your orchid. Your plants all seem clover it. Uh, not with these puns again. You're going to make all of my hard work wilt. Your humor is too dry for my impatience. Hey, hey! Not a daisy goes by where you don't get impatient. But hey, I'm just pulling your leg. Uh, will you just get out of here? My plants don't need your ridiculous jokes to grow. Go find an audience for your silly gag somewhere else. All right, all right, I'll grow. Uh, but every dogwood has his day. Uh, I'll still pop in from time to time. Uh, you're still a little rough around the hedges. Uh, 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 honestly, with him. I don't know how you can stand to be around him. Hey! Hey, oh, I'm coming! Just be a sec, I'll be right there. Oh! 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 Good, not alive. Oh, I really ought to look where my feet are going, huh? Oh, hold on, buddy. These are yours. I'd forgotten I'd had them to give them out to you. Thank the stars I hadn't dropped nothing fragile. Shoo I ain't had no idea how late it gotten. I'm plum tuckered after all this running around. 
It ain't even the first time I fell today. Ran into a few buildings on the way here, too. You know how Julie likes to do her drawing on the sidewalks and all? Well, she drew up a hopscotch on the curb this morning, and I just couldn't help myself. I had to just have a hop, skip, and a jump to start my day. I really am accident prone, I figure, because my face ended up meeting the pavement. <laughs> well, I may have been racket today and tossed around, but I'm still fair to middling. Even after that bowling ball order. I suppose I don't got much more running left to do today, though. Unless you got something for me to carry for you. Is there any leaded package or parcel you need me to run for your... Uh, wait, what, what are you looking around me for? Mailman! Uh, you uh, got any packages for little old me? My kazoo collection should have been in my mailbox today. Where is it? Uh, uh, um, now, Barnaby, you know better. I have to put it in your mailbox. It's policy. You know a dog like me doesn't do policy, <laughs> pal. The only policy I follow is the creed all dogs follow. Chase in your local mailman. No, oh, I hate that policy. I'll beat you to your mailbox lickety split. If I don't split my lickety. <sighs> <sighs> I was this close to dogpiling him. Next time, don't give Eddie any hints, eh? Well, we'll... So, they just won't leave my tomatoes alone, and who am I to shoo them away? Isn't this evil justice permitted to partake of my plans as I am, Julie? Positively, accidentally, Frank. But I've taken such good care of them. I read to them every day, I water them the perfect amount. Oh, you do. You pour a whole book on them and read them the water on their little heads and everything. <laughs> Julie, I'm serious. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Frank. I'm only teasing. You know, if this is bothering you so much, you should have a little sign just for those bugs. It can say, Terrific Tomatoes. Look, let them touch. <laughs> what makes you think they're going to be able to read all that? Well, they've got big, beautiful eyes, don't they? Like big old saucer plates. Oh, Julie, don't be so rude. You wouldn't like it if they said that about you. Said a lot about me. How lovely my hair is. That I put just the right amount of polish on my horns. <laughs> no, more like that Julie Joyful with her nose like an orange. Oh, if they said that, they'd also probably say, Oh, that's right, frankly, with that banana on his face. Banana? <laughs> Well, if they're going to be so rude in my garden, maybe it's best that they don't get to partake of any more tomatoes, then. That's right. <laughs> well, how are we going to keep them out? Maybe Howdy's got something in his shop. Oh, Howdy is more inclined to sell us canned laughter than he is to sell us something actually useful. Besides, I don't think he likes my rendition of a flea and a fly. Come up with a wonderful joke between the three of us. Isn't that right? <laughs> Which is why the pie charts must be Breen Berry. Mr. Deer, write that down. Breen Berry. Uh, uh, you, you know, Julie. Uh uh. President Joyful. Right, right, right. Pr President Joyful. I, I don't think Breen Berry's a real berry. I mean, shoot, what color even is Breen? That's classified, Mr. Deer. That's why they pay me the big shimulas. The whip now? I ain't getting paid in anything, let alone sh shamoos, yeah. Sh sh shamo what, what'd you say again, President Joyful? Shamoolas, doubloons, smolians, dinner rows. Can't you see what this company is all about, Mr. Deer? Uh, Breen? No, it's about pie charts, big buildings, hot cakes, small stuffed bears, chalk and houses. I, I don't think any of those things go together, quite frankly. It's about big suits and big hair and big voices. Mr. Deer, are you not confident in our business model? You have good shoulders under your head, Mr. Deer. I would hate to see you canned. Can me? But, but you can't fire me. It's my first day on the job. Then you'd better straighten up and fly down, Mr. Deer, because the most important part of running a business is... <clears throat> Hello, President Joyful of Everything Incorporated. What? Mr. Billy Nilly, no! We've... We're broke. They've eaten all our office supplies. Even the staplers. We're out of business. No! <laughs> this was all I had. Whether letter or parcel, whether ranch no up... Uh, I mean, joyful residence, who may I ask, is calling. I got 
Oh, Barn, good to hear from you. Y yeah, we're playing business or something or other. Yep, I'd say we're fresh at it. Whatever we're supposed to be selling. I think this time it was Breen. Oh, yeah, he's right here. Phone call for you, woman. Hello, Mr. Deer. I'm here about your emergency. Oh, thank the stars you're here, Frank. Oh. I, I mean, Mr. Frankly, we're in a heap of trouble. There's some kind of, you know, like a, it, it's like if you, you ever seen like, uh, it's, a, uh, it's like a whatchamacallit in here. A whatchamacallit? I'm afraid I only deal with bugs, Mr. Deer. A <laughs> bug? A critter, a guest, a neighbor, whatever it is, it's upheaving my whole post office. Just look at what it's done with the paper chains. It made these. It did a wonderful job. Maybe you should consider hiring it. Real cute. I'm being serious here. Oh, there's nothing to be so scared of. It's more frightened of you than you are of it, you know. Scared? Of a friendly guy like me? I wouldn't even hurt a fly. I don't think you could even look at a fly with how you're hiding from this beetle. Hey, don't go knocking a fella down when he's in a fit of desperation. If you had a rogue envelope fluttering around your home, I'd get there lickety-split. I'll take that into consideration next time that happens, Mr. Deer. See? Not so intimidating, is it? I suppose you're right. But it's easy for you to say so. I don't know these fellas on a first-name basis like you do. You don't need to be familiar with them in order to get to know them better. They're just like you or me. In fact, you're not scared of them, are you? Pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, and just a scoop of peanut butter. Gelatin works too, of course, but uh, I always like to spoil myself with a little something extra. But that's just between us. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm no gossip. I suppose gelatin can't always be relied upon, too. Still, I think it holds perfectly sliced fruit beautifully. I think that ought to mean something. You know what, Poppy? No one understands gelatin's potential. It's like they say, you eat with your eyes first. They do? Oh. Well, now you've got me worried about this new recipe. It's, it's not very, um, well, visually appealing. Oh, no, no, no. Forget what I said. We worked so hard on this. In fact, I bet these could be shaped with one of my copper molds. You're right. Maybe they'll want you have shaped like a butterfly then. Oh, that's right. Oh, such a shame butterflies aren't fond of seed, or muffins for that matter. This recipe could have saved my garden. Oh, dear. You know what? I'll try and think up a recipe that's sure to have them... Uh, to make your butterflies do a... Uh, um, hmm. Well, I'm not sure how to tell if a butterfly is happy. Whatever you decide will to make will have them all a flutter, Poppy. I think our experiment is done, too. Oh, you were so kind to say that, Frank. Oh, be careful. I wouldn't want you to burn yourself. I'm all right. You've taken all the necessary precautions to ensure my safety. Oven mitts, aprons, a second pair of oven mitts. Perhaps we could use a third pair of oven mitts. Poppy. Y you're working with such dangerous appliances. Who knows what could happen at a moment's notice? Oh, goodness gracious, just thinking about it is making my feathers fall out. No, 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 don't get yourself started, Poppy. I would rather be careful than throw caution to the wind anyhow. Besides, we're all safe and sound here. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> All right, then the night played by house will exit stage right. That is, if they show up to rehearsal. Then the maiden fair with golden hair greets her kingdom and asserts herself as the new queen of her domain. Ahem. As queen of this land, my first decree is to make hopscotch mandatory every day. Two pebbles all the way up to 20. No, 30 spaces. Hopscotch? That's not in the script. My second decree is filling our moat with scrumptious greenberry ice cream. Up to the top, enough for all the citizens to enjoy. 
Brain fairy? What is brain? Juliet Joyful! For my third degree... Julie! Sally! Those are not words! You've gone so far off the script that... that I'm not sure where we are anymore! Oh, don't worry! I know where we are, silly! We're in the Kingdom of Sweets, remember? I'm the beautiful maiden fair with the golden hair, the princess of pastries! Yes, yes. Who is now the queen of pastries? After a series of events where her father, the king of cake, gets eaten by a big, beastly, billowing bear made of broccoli. Oh, Sally, that scene was so sad. The story, Juliet. The story. Oh, right, right. So, after I show him who's boss, I go back to my palace and take back my throne. If you know the story this well, then why would the queen want to fill her moat with green berry ice cream or declare a hopscotch law after enduring a harrowing journey of self-discovery and vengeance? Oh, I don't know. She just seems like a fun lady. <sighs> okay. I suppose indulging in the finer things in life would make her character more well-rounded. All right, Juliet, proceed. Thank you, Sally. <clears throat> For my third decree, you all have to listen to me recite my favorite colors in order of my most favorite color to my least favorite. Starting now. Pink, yellow, <sighs> no, no, green, blue, Such orange, is the green. life of artistic collaboration. Mm, moss. Wouldn't you agree, Wallace? Mm. Well, I think I'm plenty funny, Barnaby. Frank thinks I'm a hoot and a half. Only a hoot and a half? What happened to the other half? <laughs> oh, you! Besides, Frank wouldn't know a good joke if it walked up to him, introduced itself, and handed him his business card. Punchline and all. He would, too. You know, Barnaby, you're not the only funny one in this neighborhood. Oh, yeah? You might be right, Julie. Howdy's a pretty funny fella, too. Not howdy me! I have a joke that will knock your hat off. I've been working on it all week. <laughs> oh boy, all week? It took you that long? <laughs> You're hearing this, little buddy? Don't! I'll show you, Barnaby! <clears throat> what did the number three say to the number two after beating him in a game of checkers? Oh no, here it comes. I won! <laughs> That was just doggone terrible. Just awful. I think I'm gonna need a doggy bag. No, it was not, Barnaby. It was a good joke. Don't you get it? One is a number, but it also sounds like one. You know, when you, like when you won a game. Oh, oh, oh. Now she's explaining it. Oh, when will the agony stop? I'm just a little pooch in peril. <sighs> Bury me in my favorite sunny spot, kid. I'm going into the light. Oh, Barnaby, you're just rotten. It was too a funny joke, wasn't it, Wolf? <laughs> so my brother Charlie tells my sister Dolly that our brother Barley's cousin Henry is turning over a new leaf. But if you ask me, Barn, a caterpillar's always turning over leaves. We just call this salad. So you don't believe the poor guy? Sounds like you're just giving him the short end of the stick. Short end of the... We've given that clown the whole branch. So he's a clown too? Now you're speaking my language, Audi. You wouldn't believe what happened next. My brother Chuck wished our brother Buck good luck on getting that clock Henry to straighten up and fly right. Fly? Wait, wait, wait. He's a butterfly. I thought he was a caterpillar. <laughs> You're being a wise guy, Bon, but I'm serious. Then you're not going to believe this. Out of the blue comes our sister Sue and her brother Drew, talking to my sister Dolly about getting Henry on a trolley to see Aunt Molly. Wooly ain't Molly. Wooly Aunt Molly, Bon. On my father's left-hand side. My left, not yours. Maybe my upper left-hand side. Oh, well, how could I get that confused? But long story short, Molly tells Henry to listen to our cousin Barley and my brother Charlie, who insists they're through with my sister Sue and her brother Drew. And to get back on that trolley and talk to Dolly about getting his act together. Oh, brother. No, no. Dolly's my sister. 
Uh, I know I can always talk to you, Bon. I tell you, having a big family ain't easy. Too many things to keep track of. You're right about that. I'm just listening in, and I can barely keep track. The only family I gotta keep track of is my dear sweet mama. That's right. You know, next time she comes around, you ought to let me serve her one of my strawberry soda pops. Nobody makes them like you do, pal. Uh, speaking of which, how's that drink treating you? Oh, oh. Pardon me, ma'am. Well, if it isn't our reliable yeah. mailman, either that or my delivery decided to sprout legs and go for a walk. No, no, it's me. Sorry, I think I might have overestimated how much to bring in a time, howdy. No. No kidding. Say, Ed, no. how about you give my goods Whoa. a break from your fumbling no. before they turn into bads? Oh, right. <sighs> um, yeah, oh, sorry about that. Howdy, I guess I'm just in a rush today. I'm a little behind with my delivery run. You don't say. I do say. I feel like I'm getting tossed around by my own parcels. <laughs> what kind of life is that for a mailman? No life at all, lad. But before you know it all, we'll be back on schedule and back at the post office. I just got a new set of stamps I've been trying to organize. I can never decide between color and shape. Oh, sign here, please. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sounds like a busy day ahead of you, Ed. Uh, speaking of busy... You remind me about a special order I need delivered. Oh, no, uh, <laughs> don't tell me, uh, it's the bowling it's balls. It's the bowling balls Julie ordered. Uh. Right. <laughs> you got it, howdy. I'll get them to her faster than it. Faster than a bee carrying wax to a honeycomb sounds good. Make sure it gets to jewels all in one piece. Right. Uh, can bowling balls break? I, er, the, the, have a good day, you two. You have a good one, too, Ed. Oh, pardon me. <sighs> Boy, that fella can talk your ear off. Let's hope he doesn't run to anybody with that order, eh? Mm. So I tells him, I'm just pulling your leg. Boy, you should have seen him home. I had the poor guy's head turn like a merry-go-round. Yeah, he's a real sourpuss. No wonder Julie can't tell a good joke. She's got a sense of humor only Frank could love. Did I tell you that joke she gave me? Something about a three that one? I ought to be a good Samaritan and teach her a thing or two about puns. What? You didn't like that one. I came up with that on the fly. That ought to be worth something. Yeah, speaking of flies, I know he's going on and on about his family today. The poor guy's got more family members than the caterpillar's got legs. And if I'm going howdies, that's at least four. Hey, unless he's walking around on all fours like moi, then I don't count arms. That reminds me, hey, he's been getting better at running. Especially for a guy that's only got two legs. Still scares easier than my mama, though. And she's a real chicken. <laughs> hey, I chased them down for a good reason. My kazoos were supposed to come in today. Which they didn't. And if you think about it, I'm the poor guy that deserves an apology here. I ran after that mailman all through the neighborhood, and with nothing to show for it. Yeah, yeah, real funny. A poor little guy like me deserves some sympathy. A clown without a kazoo is like... like an artist without his paintbrush. Go on, get dumb. Hello? Buddy? Bell? Hey, you stop painting. Everything all right? 